Introducing the 1971 movie Bananas. This comedy film directed by Woody Allen is a riotous ride through absurdity. Follow the story of a bumbling product tester, Fielding Mellish, who finds himself tangled in a political revolution in a fictional Latin American country. As the plot unfolds, get ready for a roller coaster of funny, shocking, and even sad moments. Want to know more? Stay tuned as we uncover many interesting facts about this film. From its witty dialogue to its slapstick humor, there's something for everyone. And don't forget to keep watching because there are plenty of surprises in store. Now we want to hear from you. Do you have a personal story about how this movie has impacted your life? Or maybe there's a particular scene that has stuck with you over the years. Share your cherished memories and experiences in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the journey through the world of bananas. Get ready to laugh, gasp, and maybe even shed a tear. A classic movie released in 1971 continues to capture audiences' hearts with its unique blend of humor and social commentary. Directed by Woody Allen, the film remains relevant today due to its exploration of political satire and absurdity. The movie's influence on comedic filmmaking is evident, as it paved the way for future satirical works by addressing serious topics with humor. Its impact extends to other films that use comedy to critique political issues. Even now, the themes of political unrest and absurdity depicted in the film still strike a chord with audiences. Its humor allows viewers to ponder societal issues in a lighthearted manner while also sparking thought and discussion. In conclusion, the movie's approach to addressing political and social issues through comedy has left a lasting mark. Its influence on comedic filmmaking and its ability to provoke discussion about serious topics ensure its continued relevance and impact. In the world of cinema, there was a film that caused quite a stir due to its bold advertising tactics, which included a controversial mock TV ad promoting New Testament cigarettes. This move quickly led to a condemned rating from the Catholic Church. The movie, originally set to be titled El Weirdo, took viewers on a comedic journey into societal and political satire, steering clear of conventional approaches. During a revealing interview, the filmmaker shared that they chose the name Bananas as a playful reference to the absence of the fruit in the movie, drawing inspiration from a quirky 1920s novelty song. With its unconventional humor and the filmmaker's trademark wit, the movie carved out a niche for itself as a cult classic, leaving a lasting impact on audiences. Despite facing controversies, the film's irreverent take on societal norms and political dynamics resonated with viewers, offering a fresh perspective and comedic brilliance. As time passed and the controversies faded, Bananas continued to stand the test of time as a memorable piece of cinematic history. The film's unconventional charm and lasting impact serve as a reminder of the filmmaker's ability to push boundaries and challenge the norm. Its enduring popularity proves that sometimes the most unexpected journeys yield the most memorable results. In a 1971 film featuring an ensemble cast, Conrad Bain, Charlotte Ray, and Mary Jo Catlett made brief appearances. Notably, all three would later share the screen in the 1978 TV sitcom Different Strokes. Around the 13-minute mark, a detail catches the iFielding's kitchen wall calendar, pinpointing the time as April 1970. It's a subtle yet precise nod to the temporal backdrop of the narrative. In a candid interview with Rolling Stone magazine in 1971, Woody Allen, the creative force behind the film, dismissed the notion of bananas being a political statement. Allen emphasized the primary goal to be a funny movie, echoing Groucho Marx's perspective on the Marx Brothers films, asserting humor precedes any political undertones. And there you have it, a snapshot of some intriguing facets of the film, where future sitcom stars, subtle time markers, and Woody Allen's perspective converge to shape the narrative. In creating the film, the director and lead actor, Woody Allen, took a unique approach. Instead of sticking to a detailed script, they relied on improvisation for most scenes. Allen was happy with capturing spontaneous moments and quickly moved on to the next scene, avoiding the usual methodical filmmaking process. One memorable scene occurs in a newsstand, where a character named Fielding defends buying adult magazines as part of a strange study on perversion, jokingly mentioning being up to advanced child molestation. This darkly funny moment adds a layer of satirical commentary, reflecting Alan's style of blending humor with controversial topics. In terms of comedy, the movie gained recognition, landing the 69th spot on the American Film Institute's 2000 list of the top 100 funniest American movies. This recognition shows the film's lasting humor and its ability to connect with audiences, securing its place in American comedy. In an unexpected turn during the trial scene, 
J. Edgar Hoover makes a surprising appearance, disguised as a black woman. While this moment was intended for comedic effect, it later gained unintended significance. After Hoover's passing, revelations surfaced suggesting a preference for women's attire, a detail unknown to the public during the film's release. This connection, albeit coincidental, sheds light on a lesser-known aspect of Hoover's life. San Marcos, the fictional country featured in Bananas, shares its name with a similar setting in the 1940 film One Night in the Tropics. Howard Kosel, known for his distinctive voice and sports commentary, was given the freedom to improvise much of his role in the film, adding his unique flair to the character. In a twist reminiscent of a scene from a famous movie inspired by Don Quixote, an unexpected event occurred during filming. Don Dunphy, playing himself, was learning to throw a hand grenade in a training montage. When he tossed the grenade, the pin in his hand accidentally exploded, slightly singeing Woody Allen, who was nearby. Instead of reshooting the scene, Woody decided to keep it as it was. This spontaneous reaction added a realness to the film that audiences appreciated. It showed Woody's commitment to keeping things authentic in his movies. Sometimes, these unplanned moments become the most memorable parts of a film, leaving a mark on both viewers and creators alike. And so, amidst the controlled chaos of making movies, a genuine moment was captured, forever remembered in cinematic history. During the scene where the rebels observe Esposito's inaugural speech as the new president, Fielding humorously inquires about the Spanish term for straitjacket, which is camisa de fuza, translating to force shirt or shirt of force. Louise Lasser, known for her roles in several Woody Allen films, including Bananas, shared a professional relationship with her ex-husband. She appeared in five films directed by him, with only the first two made during their marriage. Initially, Bananas was envisioned as a starring vehicle for actor Robert Morse. In the 1971 film, a collaboration between Woody Allen and his childhood friend Mickey Rose brought about a unique dynamic in storytelling. The script, co-written by the duo, featured an unexpected appearance by Sylvester Stallone in an early, uncredited role as a subway thug. Initially, doubts surrounded Stallone's suitability for the part due to perceived toughness issues, but he managed to convince Allen otherwise. Stallone's portrayal of the subway thug injected a gritty authenticity into the urban atmosphere of the movie, contrasting with Allen's trademark humor. This collaboration marked one of Stallone's earliest ventures into cinema, showcasing his potential as an actor and paving the way for his future success in Hollywood. The interplay between the main character and Stallone's thug added an interesting tension, providing depth to the storyline. Overall, Stallone's contribution to the film added an unexpected dimension, enriching its narrative and leaving a lasting impression on audiences. This partnership between Allen and Stallone stands out as a notable aspect of both their careers, highlighting their versatility and willingness to take creative risks. The movie's success is a testament to the effective collaboration between these talented individuals, showcasing their ability to create a memorable cinematic experience. In the film, despite their on-screen romance, it's interesting to note that the movie was crafted post Woody Allen and Louise Lasser's divorce. This fact adds a layer of complexity to their performances. Another notable aspect is that this project marked Woody Allen's final writing collaboration with his longtime friend Mickey Rose. Following this, Rose ventured to Los Angeles, where he contributed to various television shows and occasional films. Despite their professional separation, the bond between Allen and Rose endured until Rose's passing in 2013, evidenced by their continued friendship and regular phone conversations. During a scene where Fielding peruses porn magazines, there's a distinct placement of a right-leaning National Review magazine among them. This subtle detail adds a touch of political commentary to the film's narrative. These behind-the-scenes insights offer a glimpse into the intricacies of the movie's production and the relationships that shaped it, providing viewers with a richer understanding of the context surrounding the film's creation. In a nod to the iconic Otis a step sequence from Battleship Potemkin, there's a memorable scene about an hour into the film featuring a baby carriage bouncing down the steps. Woody Allen, known for his comedic genius, penned several of the funniest screenplays according to the Writers Guild of America's 2016 list. Among them, Eddie Hall tops the list, while Banana secures a spot at number 69. Esposito's rendition of the brief song Rebels, Are We Becomes a recurring theme, later sung by Dean Keaton and Alan Sleeper. In Denmark and Finland, the movie was released as Me and the Revolution, and Woody Allen would eventually put in a clause preventing foreign markets from renaming his films. In both the opening and closing credits, all letters are lowercase. 
Woody Allen directed his second wife, Louise Lasser, in five films. What's up, Tiger Lily? Take the money and run bananas. Everything you always wanted to know about sex, but were afraid to ask and start us memories. Only the first two were made during their marriage. In his third feature film, the director took full creative control, a pivotal moment in his career. Conscious of maintaining a light farcical tone, he intentionally avoided showing any blood in the movie. Interestingly, when the character Esposito makes his post-revolution speech, he declares Swedish as the new official language, citing the Swedish director Ingmar Bergman as his inspiration. These choices highlight the director's unique approach and influences shaping the comedic landscape of the film. Amidst the lively ambience of General Varga's residence, a charming scene unfolded where musicians were anticipated to entertain the gathering with their melodious tunes. However, faced with an unexpected shortage of instruments, a quick-thinking individual decided to think outside the box. Rather than waiting idly, they cleverly arranged for the musicians to mime their performances, seamlessly fitting the whimsical tone of the occasion. This delightful episode marked the beginning of a collaboration between a creative mind and United Artists, a partnership that would span into the late 1980s. Co-written by Mickey Rose, the film in question stands as one of three joint ventures between the pair, showcasing their creative synergy from the unconventional What's Up, Tiger Lily, to the comedic gem Take the Money and Run. In the world of cinematic partnerships, Mickey Rose's contribution to this particular project shines through. The seamless fusion of creative vision and comedic flair resulted in a film that not only entertained audiences, but also paved the way for future collaborations. This unique blend of creativity and humor became a defining feature of their journey together. As the credits rolled, viewers were left with a sense of fulfillment, having witnessed the beginning of a partnership that would leave a lasting impact on the comedy scene. Little did they know that this was just the beginning of a series of cinematic delights crafted by the creative minds behind the scenes. In scenes cut from the movie, government troops, disguised as a rumba band, chat cha cha through the jungle to surprise the rebels. Additionally, a bogus Bob Hope acted as a decoy so government planes could bomb the rebels. Nadia Baskell, despite being billed forth, had no dialogue in the film. This was the second and last Woody Allen film that Marvin Hamlish scored. Unlike his work in Take the Money and Run, Hamlish had the freedom to compose standalone songs. In the world of comedy, a certain individual stands out for his multifaceted contributions to film. He not only directed and wrote scripts, but also took center stage in some of the most beloved comedies of all time. In one particularly memorable movie, he portrays a character caught in hilariously absurd situations. In this film, a notable actor, known for his role as Vargas, had previously appeared in another movie with the same character name. Interestingly, the filmmaker had also used this name in a short story, adding a curious connection to the actor's involvement in the film. According to film experts, the movie's satire on politics and society has continued to resonate with audiences, even as subsequent events in Central America have unfolded. This enduring relevance has solidified its status as a timeless classic in the comedy genre. In 1971, the movie featured Roger Grimsby as himself, adding a touch of authenticity to the narrative. The inclusion of a real-life figure like Grimsby contributed to the film's straightforward approach, blending fiction with elements of reality. The decision to cast Grimsby in a cameo role provided a glimpse into the film's satirical take on societal and political issues. Grimsby, known for his work as a news anchor, brought a sense of credibility to the movie, grounding the storyline in a recognizable and familiar setting. His presence added a layer of authenticity to the film's comedic narrative, creating a unique dynamic between the fictional world of the movie and the real-world context Grimsby represented. The inclusion of Roger Grimsby as himself served as a nod to the era's media landscape, offering a satirical commentary on the blurred lines between reality and entertainment. This choice reflected the film's overall tone, emphasizing its humorous and critical examination of contemporary issues. In summary, the incorporation of Roger Grimsby as himself in the 1971 film Bananas added a distinctive element to the narrative. His presence as a real-life news anchor contributed to the film's satirical tone, offering a unique commentary on the societal and political landscape of the time in an unexpected twist. An interesting tidbit about a lesser-known movie from 1971 comes to light. Its original budget was drastically cut during filming, causing major challenges for the production team. This led to compromises in filming schedules and overall quality, creating a tough situation for everyone involved. The movie, directed by Woody Allen, is known for its clever humor and playful take on politics.
It's set in a made-up Latin American country and follows the adventures of a nervous New Yorker who gets mixed up in a revolution. Despite the financial setbacks, the film still managed to charm audiences with its mix of humor and social commentary. Woody Allen's comedic talent shines through in the movie's funny scenes and witty dialogue, earning it a place in movie history. Even though the production faced hardships, the movie's lasting popularity shows how resilient and creative the cast and crew were. Despite the obstacles, the film became a cult favorite, loved by viewers for its cheeky humor and sharp wit. In an unexpected turn, a sad and shocking trivia fact about the 1971 movie Bananas is that actor Hervé Villachez, who portrayed the character Miguel, later struggled with personal demons and tragically took his own life in 1993. Now, delving deeper into the movie, it showcases the story of a man named Fielding Mellish, who undergoes a transformation from a bumbling activist to a revolutionary leader in a fictional Latin American country. Directed by Woody Allen, the film satirizes political revolution and American interventionism in a humorous yet thought-provoking manner. With its witty dialogue and absurd situations, Bananas remains a classic example of Allen's early comedic style. It also features memorable performances from actors such as Woody Allen himself and Louise Lasser contributing to its lasting impact on cinema. Despite its comedic elements, the film also offers social commentary on various issues including power dynamics and societal norms. As a result, Bananas continues to be appreciated for its blend of humor and satire, making it a significant piece of cinematic history.